thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. I just welcome you, Holy Spirit. Have your way on this evening, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Decrease me as I increase in you even the more, oh God. Let your word, let your word fall on fertile ground, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that even now, that you begin to cleanse us. Wash us with the blood of Jesus. And any sins. Ah, Father, we ask you right now, repenting for our evil ways and our evil thoughts, oh God. Cleanse us, oh God. Make us whole. Heal, oh God. And mend the broken hearts. Father, I ask you right now, Father, allow this word to penetrate the heart of man. Begin to break every chain. Go in. And I and be again to cut off every communication of the enemy. and unlink every ungodly soul ties. and let your people ah to be broken that is being broken that come to you as you mend them ah specifically the way you designed them to be. Oh God. Father, we ask you right now, even now, Father, that you will continue, oh God, doing a new thing in each and every one of us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Began to restore, ah, began to break, ah, bah, 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 every stronghold, ah, let your anointing flow from the head. To break every stronghold, lift every burdens and destroy all yokes, ah, bah, bah, and we Thank you right now, Father, for the victory, and we celebrate it, oh God, in advance. Oh God, we celebrate that you want us whole and free. Hallelujah, and you, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, as I decrease, oh God, Lada you show up and you show out, oh God, and I declare and decree that everything must line up with the word and with the will of God in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. We're going to actually talk a little bit about, I, I, I say it all the time to the class that we do on Thursday, and we've been in uh, eight weeks class, and actually this Thursday will be our last day. We talked about overcoming rejection by Fred, I mean Frank Hammond. Oh my God. Frank Hammond. He's also the same gentleman that wrote Pigs in the Parlor. So this book, uh, Overcoming Rejection, Overcoming Rejection is the book that we're coming out of. And I'm telling you, Spiritual Warfare Series Value 2 is such a, a, a good book uh, to study as a group. To come in and study and begin to allow God to break all those things that's been we've been holding on. And didn't know that we were holding on as long as we've been saved. And, and we've been carrying those things and we have tend to carry those things into relationships we have carried those things into new relationships as well uh so we 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 just want to shine a light amen shine a light on on this topic that we're going to talk about on this evening and the topic is a little kid crying out for help a little kid crying out for help and we actually talking about the spirit of rejection the spirit of rejection and so we um first of all is we uh, name the topic uh a little kid uh crying out for help is we t we're basically coming from uh the spirit of rejection and all and also and tied into the rest of uh, development uh spirit as well and the rest development uh spirit if you're not familiar with that spirit that is like a, a spirit that has has came in as a child it came in from childhood trauma it could can it came in as as one of the to be uh, daddy's little girl or, or even uh, have that uh, uh, where we have grown immaturely and has and when things are not going our way and we what we throw a temp a tantrum or we also isolate ourselves as well so this is what the rest development is it's, it literally like stunts our growth uh-huh it stunts our growth 
in order for us to mature in the spiritual things that's of God. Uh huh. And so this arrest development, do your homework on it. Uh, how it 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 slows you down from do, to receiving the things of God. Uh, uh, slow you down for uh being having an open mind of the things that is spiritual that God is trying to download in you in order for you uh, when you get into your word you're not able to comprehend you're not able to get a revelation you're not able to understand the word sometimes you even want to fall asleep and that is nothing but a spirit when you get in your word and don't be and, and just immediately try to uh, the spirit tries to close your ear allowing you not to hear uh, what the word of God is saying because the word of God is what, what mature us the word of God is what feeds us the word of God is what what uh washes us and you, you follow me that's you know washes you the word okay and so we're going to talk about in this picture of you as as a child we're gonna we're gonna take some of you back to your childhood trauma we're gonna ask the Holy Spirit God began to point a finger of the things that we had held on to from generation to generation or even as uh from um from events from events that we have held on as a child God bring those things to the full surface oh God and allow us to understand that these are not something that you want is healthy it's something that you want us to continue to continue to hold on to as a, a believer uh huh. And so, as I want you to paint this picture and ask the Holy Spirit to go back to your childhood events. Some of some some have been some have been abused. Some have been physically, emotional, verbally, uh, uh, and mentally abused by a parent or even abandoned by a father, and uh, didn't. Uh, didn't have no uh, shown a real love from a parent or a sibling, you know. And so, what it does, it, 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 it this childhood trauma, uh, has triggered into our adulthood, which we're talking about rejection and arrest development, how they work hand in hand, okay. And so, let's let, let I'm a left left outside the circle and feel let's feel the the the, the word rejecting let's let's feel that word rejection and what it feels like it, it has you feeling lonely it has you sometimes feeling confused okay and so feeling this spirit of rejection is one of the most emotional hurtful of all human emotions it can leave a uh, deep deep Pain. If you ever heard some people just have pain in their body, pain in their backs, pain in their knees, pain in their legs, pain in their arms. See, a lot of this could be from rejection. The spirit of rejection leaves that deep, painful, emotional wounds in your soul, your spirit, body, and heart. See, there is a little child in all of us that has been rejected numerous times in our lives. We all have experienced that in one point of our life. See, rejection is a spirit that pursues us and looking for an open door, open crack, open door to what cause pain and destruction. See, this spirit of rejection has several goals and we're going to talk about that on, on this evening. If you stay with me, just stay with me. Okay? So, the first one is rejection as it gains want to trauma, really want to uh, uh, torture you or tr uh, torture you or even uh, traumatize you or even torment you. Same thing. And you will, and it, and it will lie constantly in your ear, lie. Especially about God's love and acceptings of you and, and about your value, your worth, and your identity. See, there is assignments to everything that can uh, keep you believing that you're, 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 you're not loved or accepted or valued by anybody. See, all these uh, things aims by keeping you in doubt, unbelief. Confusion and torment you constantly. It can constantly keep playing in your mind. You know why people treat me the way I'm. 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 You know, 
everywhere I go, I'm, I'm, people don't look at me the same way. They don't respect me. They don't, they don't like me or things of that nature. That's why we're trying to go back to the little girl or the little boy that was crying out for help, that was rejected by mom in her mother in his mother's womb or being abandoned by his daddy that was never in his life or never knew his dad see rejection goals is to make rejection a normal uh, uh, a currency in our life it sets you up to be rejected over and over and over again until you believe that you are totally unacceptable or some of them just think this is just my personality. This is something that I got to live with for the rest of my life. Now nah, the devil is a liar. And even want to blame God. I even want to say that God don't accept me. Oh, God is punishing me. That That's not. God is a good, good, good father. And that's not his character. He is love. God is love. Okay. See, rejection wants to lead you into a self-rejection, a uh, self-hate, or reject of uh, rejection of others. See, rejection can find this way into your heart in many, many, many ways. See, number one, rejection by your father is a destructive open door for this spirit. See, the Father is the primary love, encouragement, and protector that source, the source in a child's life. I'm going to repeat that. The Father is the important primary source in one child's life. Because why? Because it produces love encouragement and protective source in a, a child's life see healing and mending ministry we find so many cases of fathers who abuse and neglected their children physically emotionally verbally and even spiritually see all of these are open doors to rejection abandonment and fear see the second open door is rejected by your mother just like father, many mothers have their own hurts, pains, fears, and issues that keeps them from being able to love and nourish that child in a godly or healthy environment. See, rejection by your spouse or your children, your friends, your peers at work or school or, or even church also opens this door of rejection. It is rare, it's rare that a person that who has not experienced some rejection from someone close to them when rejection roots is in your soul. It would influence others to find some areas where you are different and reject you. Next thing, once you feel rejected, you will look for rejection and be expecting it whether it's it's there or not see the rejection spirit once it gets a foothold it always seek to reject and to be rejected i pray that this word gonna help somebody be free on tonight that you don't no longer have to wear rejection on your sleeve see the spirit and we're going to talk about this rejection and the two popular uh, lies that the enemy has instilled in us and caused us to be deceived. Okay? See, the spirit never stops telling you that you're unwanted, unloved, and uh, unaccepted by your friends, family, uh, parents, spouse, church, and uh, it, it, anyone. See, rejections constantly uh, uh, will use you, you by making you feel unwanted, unvalued, or full of guilt and shame or fear. Okay? So rejection tells you that you will never belong. You will never be good enough. There is something uh, uh, wrong with you that you're different 
and have flaws. False. That is a lie from the pit of hell. The enemy job, and he's on his job, is to kill, steal, and destroy. So I want you to be free from this thing called the spirit of rejection. No longer you have to hold on to this. No longer have to think that this is the norm and this is something that you you was born you you was born this way. Mm, no, no, you're not. So let's ask the question. Let me ask you this question. Who told you that? Who told you that no one could ever like you? Or who told you you would never fit in anywhere? Who told you that you should reject someone else first so if they can avoid rejecting you? Who told you that even God doesn't care about you? See, Genesis chapter 3, verse 11. Genesis chapter 3 and 11 said, And he said, Come on, Adam. Who told you that you were naked? See, we all know the answer to that question. The enemy is the father of lies. In order to defeat rejection and lie, lie, uh, live for God's truth, you must identify these lies in your life. Write it down. Write it down. Come on. The lies that the enemy is telling you. The lies that the enemy has constantly deceived you about. See, the reality is that the Father God wants a relationship with you and he longs for you to make his love and exceptions of you number one in your life. Not what others say or do. Not the lies that you have been believing. He is your Heavenly Father and he will always think the best for you. Even if you're not there yet. His destiny for you is to be your best. And he only has the best plans for you and I. He never misunderstand you. He'll never, come on now, remember, he'll never misunderstand you. Mm -hmm. Because what? He created you in his image. He always, always there waiting with open arms to love support to heal to listen to hold and protect you everything you will ever need is in your father is in him and it's from him okay so here are some promises God makes to you in his word and write these scriptures down first Peter 2 and 9 and I want y'all to meditate on these words definitely on these particular three scriptures that I'm about to give you first Peter 2 and 9 says but you are chosen you are a chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light the next scripture Matthew 28 and 20 verse um, Matthew 28 verse 20 I'm sorry it said and surely I am with you always to the very end of age that was Matthew 28 verse 20 the next one Deuteronomy chapter 31 and 6 Deut Deuteronomy chapter 31 and 6 it said be strong and courageous do not be afraid or, te or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the word. That's the word. The word will never return to him void. Okay. Write those three scriptures. Apply it to your prayer. Use it and meditate on it. Day and night. Allow it to soak in your spirit. So let's talk about overcoming this spirit of rejection. See, this is a good time to put down the eight R's. The eight, the number eight R's in practice. And number one is to recognize these lies for what they are and who they're coming from. 
Recognize. Remember, I always say, only way an alcoholic or a drug addict or, 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 or a murderer or an adulterer or whoever can get healed from something, they have to admit or recognize, hey, I need help. I recognize the lies from where they are and what they are. Okay? And and who and where they coming from? Come on. Number 2. Take responsibilities for believing the enemy's lies and come out of the agreement with them. That's it. Come out of the agreement with the enemy, the adversary. Mhm. Mm because the only way the enemy can come in, he got to have a crack. He got to have an open door to come in. And once he comes in, there that's how he has legal access to us. Legal grounds, legal rights, same thing. To continue what? Lying to us about who we are. See, that's why it's so important that you got to know who you are and who you belong to. Come on. Come on. Next one, repent. For any self-pity or bitterness, fear, rejection, others, and any other sin that are tied to the spirit of rejection. Repent from that thing. Turn. 180 degrees. Turn from that sin. Turn from that old man nature. Got to turn. Renounce. Renounce the spirit of rejection. Refuse to focus on rejection and give it any more power in your life. Next one. Remove it. Remove it. Tell rejection. You got to go. Because rejection no longer live here anymore. Rejection, you're not paying any rent in this temple, in this house. And it's a Simon. Is canceled. Take authority of that thing. Tell it. Your Simon is canceled in Jesus' name. Mm hmm Rejection. You gotta go. I command rejection to go in the name of Jesus. And I send it back to the sender. Or I send it to dry places. And never to return, not even for a season in Jesus' name. Put it under the blood. Put it under the blood of Jesus as well. Get healed. From the spirit of rejection. Next one. Resist. Resist. You remember it says. First of all we have to submit to God. Resist the devil. And what? It has to flee. So we resist it. Instead of believing you are rejected. Believing in God. Believe in God's truth. God heart is that would be focused on thoughts and attention. On how much he loves us. And accept us. His love is the model for perfect exceptions that defeats all rejections. See, next one. Let's rejoice. Let's put a praise on it. Let's put a praise on it. Begin to rejoice. Come on. Every trial or tribulation, he said, what? To count it all joy. Everything that you're going through. If that thing is recycling itself. Let's start putting a praise on it. Let's start rejoicing that God break, break that. Off of me because I recognize it. Okay. So we rejoice in God. And God's love for you. Thank him. Remember that the cross of Jesus. Christ was God's ultimate act. Of love towards us. You are accepted. Because. Through his rejection. Yeah. Jesus opened the door. To our father's God. Father. Uh, God's total exception. See, this is the gift that he gave you. Man. Last one. Restore others. Restore others. One of the best ways to stay strong is to encourage yourself or also bring one of your sisters in and let them know, hey, we can get through this. Reach out to others who what may be dealing with the same issue. Pray for them. Invite them 
to groups, uh, women group session, Bible study, and help build someone else up and remind them that God loves them even the more. That's important. To let you know that this spirit of rejection doesn't play fair. My apostle Abby Hopkins, mentor and spiritual covering, wrote a book called The Spirit of Rejection. Good, good book. Good book to read. And our next class that's coming up in this month was next Thursday. This is another book that he made. Apostle Abby Hopkins did called Deliverance from Damaged Emotions. So next Thursday, this is the book that we're coming out of. No. That every month we're coming out of a different book. I want you guys to stay tuned. But also, I really want you to know, I'm not just promoting my spiritual vibes. I mean, my spiritual mentor uh, and spiritual covering book. But I'm also want to re recommend Get Divine Deliverance by Apostle Francella McCoy on Amazon or even on our website at healing m as healing mending dot org. So, healmending.org is where you can also order it. So, listen, this book right here, I'm telling you, is the guide to getting you free and to stay free. And that's the thing with deliverance. Divine deliverance is something that we all believers should be doing is deliverance. Because deliverance is the children's bread. Come on. Healing is the children's bread. And so, we as believers, we are supposed to be doing the same work Come on. The great commission that Jesus did on earth. Come on. He said what? Lay hands on the sick. Cast demons out in my name. Come on. Baptize them. Baptize them. Make disciples. We, what we making disciples? We got to what? Do what Jesus commissioned us to do. Now if you're not learning all these things, that's up to you. To get the books, get knowledge. I always say, knowledge is power. When I got called into deliverance, I was one of those pastors too. was like, uh-uh, casting out demons is just not my calling. No, it's not a calling. It's for who all believe. It's for every believer. It's not a specific uh, a calling. It's not a, a, a specific gift. No, it's not. All it, all God is looking for a willing vessel, someone to someone to get the job done. That's all He needs. So if you go uh, through inner healing and deliverance with us, I guarantee within months you should be doing the same thing, helping somebody else to get healed and delivered and set free from bondage, strongholds. Come on, being oppressed, depressed. Come on, harassed by demons. And enticed. And that's a whole different story. That goes with the lust. Uh, but yes. Just want to say. That you can get free from this thing. And how to stay from this thing. Stay free. Stay in your word. Stay connected to God. That's the lifeline. Stay connected. Because you know once you backslide from salvation or, or even relapse from your deliverance, you got seven hit men. I call them hit men. Seven demonic spirits that's sitting on the sideline waiting to come back to this house. Waiting for you to trip up. Waiting for you to fall back into your old nature. Because he's what? He's familiar with your sin. He's familiar with your ancestors iniquity and so we got to break that cycle our people perish because of lack of knowledge so if you're not understanding what deliverance is and what the great commission is and you're not studying and what to show yourself approved you can't blame it on the teacher you can't blame it on your pastor you can't blame it on your leader especially by us being in, in, in when we was on lockdown you should have been in Every book you could get that was was edifying God in his word and the scripture and teaching you. Come on. How spiritual warfare is. Spiritual warfare is no joke. I'm telling you. Don't go back to vomit. Don't go back to the norm. 
Come on. You must. Come on. Move forward. You got to keep, keep your eyes. Keep your eyes. Focus. On the prize. On the prize. Amen. Because this is so terrible. When our people are literally dibbing and dabbing and and strange fire. Trying to serve two masters. Listen. You only can serve one master. I always say this. You love one and hate the other. See, ain't no in between. Ain't no in between. So, if you dibbing and dabbing in a new age movement. Come on. And you call yourself a, a saint. A believer. Or a Christian. Well, everybody now proclaim to be Christian. So that's why I just said believer. What? Believe of Christ. Believe in God. The Father. Come on, the Trinity. The Holy Spirit. And that's why what we, we, right now, we need to be filled up every day with the Holy Spirit. We need, our minds need to be renewed daily. Because this old corrupted world, I have us believing the lie of the enemy. Yes, yes. Jesus came to set the captive free. Yes, yes, he has. So you got to believe that he don't want you to be bound with depression, bound with uh, fear, bound with anxiety, bound with sickness. Come on. He want us totally free. And the way you can get that is begin to get in your word. Get praise and worship music on. Stay in that worship mode. Come on. Telling you. When you stay in that worship mode. The enemy can't stand that music. When you worshiping. That's how he has to go. He has to go. Start lifting your hands up. And just worship. And give God a radical praise. God God, I thank you for the breakthrough. I, God I thank you for the victory. Because I am an overcomer. And everything that you went through, let you, letting you know that you didn't go through it for nothing. Well, Lord, why, why I had to be molested at an early age several times by a close relative? Just using it as an example, y'all. And that's where now so many, so many of us have fell off because we never dealt with that childhood trauma. Why? Because we... We suppressed it. We, a lot of times, couldn't tell nobody because if we told anybody, they wouldn't believe us. And if we did tell somebody, they actually shut us down and told us we was lying. So what we do, we shut down. We shut down and pretend or try to black, blank it out, block it out. But guess what? The devil don't blank it out. He don't block it out either because as you grow up to be an adult just think that thing was in an infant stage now it's a full blown adult now looking for love in all the wrong places in and out of beds with different mates different partners because you never dealt with the root you never got to the root of that thing how did that thing get here how did that door open? Ask those questions. Come on. If you constantly having dreams, bad dreams, replaying the thing that happened to you in your life, having really, really got free from that thing. Why? Because you, you're still holding on to it. Even the unforgiveness. Even the resentment and the bitterness towards the individual, the perpetrator that use, abuse you. Come on. Sexual abuse you. You never release them. If it's playing over and over in your mind. Get free from that thing today. Get totally free. And let God do the rest. Like I said, you got to recognize it. And we talk about rejection. It has over 20 spiritual roots that attaches itself to it. So that's just like I said, when that door opened, that one demon come in of rejection, it's going to bring 
demonic traffic. It's gonna bring his gang gang bangers with him, along with him, to reinforce that thing, to keep you bound, to keep to keep you in a place where you you, you feel like you can't move forward. Come on, low self esteem, intimidated, easily offended. Come on. That thing has so many spiritual fruits or roots that attaches itself with the rejection. That book is such a powerful book. And I'm telling if you sign up for the class, the classes are free every Thursday at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Letting you know that these books, I always say, is powerful. They're powerful to get you out of bondage. To get you, come on, free from the things that have been holding you back from being used by God. Come on. A lot of us need to be a little bit further in our spiritual walk. Come on now. We need to be a little bit further because why? God said, I'm taking you all for glory to glory, from faith to faith, but apparently I'm at a standstill. Mm, why am I at a standstill? Why am I gifts are being stagnated? Because we never dealt with that root called rejection. So remember, as we talked about, every symptom, every root, and know that the title was called A Little Kid Crying Out for Help. Each one of us have a cry out for help because we all been broken. We all been hurt from something. Well, I pray that this message go forth in Jesus' name, that it blesses someone someone to say hey that's me I can relate I don't have to wear a mask I don't have to cover it up anymore I can expose the enemy and let him know no more no more your time has expired because why I'm exposing you yeah sometimes you might have to tell a family secret they always say what well, stays in the house stays in the house mm -mm. that thing will haunt you for the rest of your life if you don't deal with it if you don't get through it by getting in God's presence and say God I confess I've been holding on to anger I've been holding on to bitterness I've been holding on to this thing too long that in, look, that little seed now has grown up to be a big tree. And you don't realize where did that tree come from? How did that tree get here? So I pray that you get free from this thing. I pray that you study. Show yourself approved. Because this, again, you can't blame the leaders. That's just like sending your kids to school. First day elementary what preschool does it start out and your kid don't know his alphabets or the kid don't know how to uh, uh, count or the kid don't know how to write their name or the kid don't even know how to read hmm. it's the parents fault not the teacher that stores at home so what I'm saying your study stores at home getting in your word getting good information God information godly information about healing about deliverance about come on strongholds about spiritual warfare because this warfare thing is no joke and I'm saying this to say this with love guys if y'all don't have a fasting lifestyle I'm telling you the devil gonna run rings around you because you know what his job is to take you out at your vulnerable stage your vulnerable stage can be like literally depressed. Your vulnerable stage can be where you just fell off a little bit. 
Mmm, my God, my God. Well, I'm going to end because I got another place to be. And that's on our corporate prayer. Unite in love. Listen, we have corporate prayer three times a week. Matter of fact, we pray five times a week. Our singles do it Tuesdays and Thursdays, a.m., 6 a.m. And then our corporate fa a prayer, I'm sorry, is on the Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday at 6 p.m. And listen, we don't miss a note. We don't miss a note. Because listen, if you ain't connected with some intercessors, come on, that can gear you up as a leader, the enemy going to take you out because you a threat to the kingdom of darkness. So you got to have some powerful intercessors that's can gird you up. Come on, Moses. Aaron had, what, when he was in the battle. Come on, they, they kept his hands up. And every time he kept his hands up in worship mode, come on, they won the battle. So that's the best way to stay in worship mode to win this battle. See, you fighting a, th this battle in the natural. You hearing and seeing things in the natural and you acting just like and conforming to how the world will react. This is a spiritual battle. I always tell my warriors, you better get, you better get a strategic plan, a strategic tactic put in place when it comes to praying. You can't still pray the kindergarten prayers. That ain't, 2022 demons ain't playing that. That ain't going to work. So that's why I say fasting and praying is the only way you can cast a lot of these demons out. God bless you guys. I love you guys. Keep Apostle Francella McCoy and Pastor Reginald McCoy in your prayer. God bless you. Hugs and kisses until the next time. Peace. Bye-bye. God bless.